existence is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is the Week in Geek with David D. Squared, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Broadcasting from the Gregory Ricks and Associates Wealth Management Studios, here's D. Squared. Greetings, people of Earth! This is the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D. Squared. Hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas, and uh, now we are on the precipice of getting out of 2020 and into 2021. So uh, let me just lay out the show for you real quick. You know, it has been a very rough year for all of us between quarantine, COVID, and, you know, jobs, and just it has been a rough year. Looks like there's a little bit of hope on the horizon, but I wanted to look back at this year. I felt like... I wanted to kind of get a little bit of closure, maybe, if that's the word. I just wanted to remember what we've lost this year, who we lost specifically, and uh, that that was my boy Brian Held. What I'm going to do is I'm taking kind of like a best of from all of Brian's memorial shows, and and specifically you, the callers, our friends and family who called into the show to share some great stories about Brian Held. Uh, it, It was very therapeutic for myself and and for all of us here at the week and geek and i wanted to kind of you know you do some of the highlights from all of that and so you know we've got our our, our good friend the the tea goddess kimberly richardson uh the silver blatts uh we also have uh, melissa from uh tomb of nick cage uh we also got our, our guy ted wally unity over there at coast con and well just pretty much the gulf coast fandom uh, a friend of brian's william from the sca and we'll also play the i kill dragons uh trailer that brian did trailer or commercial whatever you want to call it and uh, of course Bart Patari of uh, uh, Geek Geeks Empowering Extraordinary Kids. So all of that is on the docket for tonight's show. Just kind of remembering uh, our, our good friend Brian who passed away back in March. I, I still just boggles the brain that he's not here anymore. So uh, without much further ado, let's uh, get right into it. This is uh, remembering our friend Brian Held in the year 2020. We've got uh, Bart Patari, uh, Geeks Empowering Extraordinary Kids. Uh, Bart, man, huh? Look, I'm not going to ask how you're doing. I just want to how, how is how is the charity going? Let's talk about that, Bart. Well, uh, thank you, first of all, for having me on. Uh, the uh, charity Geek has been doing uh, fairly well. Uh, we actually have, uh, before this uh, this whole thing happened, we actually had at least one other school that we had targeted uh, for the last five years. We've been able to get uh, devices, uh, part of our mission, to about eight schools in the metro New Orleans area. And uh, Brian was actually a part of that uh, with us uh, for like the last three years. You know, uh, so, so yeah, it's going to take it away. Exactly. So people, so people will know because. A lot of people might not know exactly what geek is and what you do. You want to just so so people who are listening who don't know, you want to just explain it to them for a moment. Absolutely, sure. So geek uh, stands for geeks empowering extraordinary kids, and as, as you said, and uh, we uh, we were spawned from fandom essentially uh, back in uh, about the 2013 2014 uh, range, and um, <clears throat> it was. Uh, uh, put together as a means to uh, raise funds through grants and donations to provide learning devices like iPads, Chromebooks, and, and other and other uh, sort of tech media to classrooms with special needs kids uh, because those are usually the most uh, the least funded uh, areas. And um, over like the last, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, over the last uh, five years, we've been able to get about 20 pieces of tech to about eight schools in that in that area. And uh, we get funds through the Red Dress Run. We get funds through uh, the uh, the other random grants uh, that we've gotten. Uh, we've actually also gotten funds uh, through uh, as a because of Brian's work. Actually, we got we just got some funds through you all uh, as a result of the five year anniversary show that you all did. Woo! Tell so, us about uh, that because I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Neither do. Neither do I. Paul. Paul was the DD that night. I don't yeah. remember anything. 
All I, all uh, I remember yeah. was Brian behind the bar screaming at people. That 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 was that was like one of the highlights of the evening. Brian was oh, behind oh, the mean, bar that for was some really late in the evening. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> you you yeah. mean the whole not real radio incident? Yes. yes. Oh God, yes. yes. Oh, God. Yeah, that was good time. Yeah, right so, there. so to 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 fill in the, to fill in some of the some of the uh, some of the the holes in yes. everybody's memory. Please uh, do. The, uh, for the for the five year anniversary that uh, you all we they did the uh, celebration at it was at Southport Hall. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Brian, uh, one of, one of the things that, that that was big about that Brian was big about was acts of service, and uh, he wanted to make us the friend. Uh, that's one of the reasons that he used to hang with us, do the uh, offer to to come with us to the uh, to the distributions because he loved doing the uh, just be able to give stuff to ki- to, to the kids yeah. and uh, meet people straight. And uh, he wanted to uh, also, basically he made us the charity of d- the designated charity for you all, uh, for y'all's uh, event that, you know, from raising money through silent auctions and uh, various door prizes and other things. And I think, uh, again, I don't have the, remember the exact number. Uh, I think you all helped us raise about $1,200. Uh, and it was close that, to that. that it was the next- yeah. That was about right. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and we we took that we took those funds and parlayed them without what we had gotten through Red Restaurant and some other things, and we, that's pretty much it. Went right back out the following the following cycle to uh, to schools, and uh, you know, again, we couldn't have done all the extra schools that we did without you know without that help. So you know, again, I've told you all off offline, and I'll tell you online now. Thank you. <laughs> The bar, you know, I mean that, that those are that's just like, uh, you know, I mean even we said it last week. They're just all these little little things, but there were such big things in the grand scheme of things that that Brian would do, and it's just you know, uh, it sucks ass. I don't know any other way to put it, but I mean that's look, so eloquent. Well, you're welcome. I'm a wordsmith. What can I say? But Bart, I mean, here, here's one of the things though too. I mean, like you you guys have grown in as an organization. A lot of that was kind of you know Brian, you know trying to introduce you guys to other things. And I think, uh, you know, just the, the lasting effect that Brian is going to ha- have on geek as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, actually Brian, uh, one of the last, uh, this, this last wizard world, uh, he had introduced me to, uh, somebody who, uh, through, I think it was through the, uh, Chewbacca's group. And, uh, we were looking for an extra volunteer to work the booth. And, uh, he, he's like, Bart meet so and so, so and so meet Bart, you know, um, and then we met and during the weekend we talked and it's like, you know, it's they were really happy to help with us help us with our with our uh that weekend and then they're like if we need if you need any extra help, uh let me know. So I've we've been in contact and um yeah, you know, it's 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 you know, it's it's gonna it's it's the thing that like you were saying on on your lead in, it's the thing that sort of uh it keeps on spidering out all the connections that he made and he fostered yeah. and um, that that's uh, it's, it's, it's an incredible thing. Bart, look, thank you so much for calling in. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are having, uh, you know, it, look, everybody grieves differently and at different times. And so, you know, I mean, look, thank you for calling. Thank you for sharing your story. And uh, look, I don't know where the show is going. I, I, I can't, honestly haven't stopped to think about it. Uh, but if, if, if we keep on going, man, we're, we're going to, you know, We'll, we'll always be partnered up with you, Bart. So thank you so much for calling in, brother. And yeah, Bart, thanks, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, yeah we, we we appreciate it, and, and anything we could do to help you all out, let us know. But uh, thank you for having me on. Cool, Bart. Thank you, brother. William, how are you today, man? <laughs> I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Who are you, William? I didn't. I didn't I'm, I'm clearing calls, but I'm just kind of like, okay, what's your name? Come on. Who are you, William? Uh, William White. Uh, I was involved in Chewbacca and the Red Shirts for a while. Uh, oh. Uh, but a long time ago, uh, I first met Brian in the SCA. Nice. Where uh, I was interested in getting inv- involved in the fighting. And, um, you know, a lot of people think of Brian as maybe doing LARP or... or no, he was a, a stick a, jock, dude. Costuming, but he was, it a, was stick a stick jock. Yeah, he is hardcore martial art. I, I didn't really realize what I was, what I was getting into. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, talk about him helping people connect. I'd played in the SCA for a while on and off, and they called me the hermit. Okay. You know, and, and he really got me to, to come out of my shell and um, talked me through putting together a kit 
uh, you know, when you see what he's wearing in that I Kill Dragons uh, video, <laughs> you know, that's really yeah. awesome. You know, any oh, rust yes. on that is not some kind of, you know, detail he put on, although he loved attention to detail. I mean, that was from us out there working out and sweating until your armor rusts. You have yep. to fix it. Uh, but he was just amazingly patient with me. You know, I was not the greatest fighter, but uh, it was a really good experience for me. I you know I fought for about six years and just had some wonderful experiences with that. But, you know, the skills that he imparted to me in, in going over your armor, making sure it was safe. At first, I thought he was just kind of anal retentive. Uh, <laughs> no, he was. He was. <laughs> he was. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know that you can quote your rules and find loopholes of rules. And, <laughs> you know, when I was trying to get into this process, I thought, wow, there's a ton of rules this guy's fixated on. But when I when I saw that, you know, like any little flaw in the armor, and you're going to end it with an injury. Um, you know, I had a slip up one time and, and broke it back in my hand. And uh, wow. it would have been a lot worse if uh, he hadn't walked me step by step through that. And then it, it trained me out on the field and just had an amazing amount of patience. Dude, that is, you know, and, and look, yeah, he was a stick jock. It was funny because Brian and I, like, like I said, we can't remember when we met, but like, it's funny. Like, he and I are lies sort of diverged, and I went and did all the LARPing with the Federation of Live Action Gaming over there in Fountain Blood. Flag. Flag. And, 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 you know, Brian was doing the SCA stuff. It was funny, man. Like, like, it, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't remember that. I more drinking. Yeah, well, you know, hey, look, there was drinking involved with the SCA and and flag. You know, that's you know, oh, definitely. One of them used well, hard one sticks. Last little, one, <laughs> mm-hmm. We use foam. Yes. <laughs> Uh, William, look, man, thank you so much for calling in, dude. That means a lot. And you know what? It's perfect that you brought up I Kill Dragons because I, 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 I know, beautiful segue. William, thank you so much, brother, for calling <laughs> in, man. It, it is perfect segue because I have the I Kill Dragons uh, audio. I had to bleep out when he says dragons are notorious bleep holes, but here's Brian in I Kill Dragons. We see these problems every day. Fire damage, missing pets and children, theft, foundation problems. These problems sound familiar to you. Call me, Byron Delancey. You just may have a dragon problem. A dragon? How could I be sure? Call me at 322-4687. I'll come to your home, explore it, and if a dragon is found, I'll slay it once and for all. Should I just call the police? Don't find out the hard way that dragons are bulletproof. You'll just raise its ire and likely risk further property damage. I wield the DS-1000XL. Forged from adamantine, mined near the mouth of the Rhine 600 years ago in medieval Germany. It's the only metal still around that can dent their thick hides. Uh, what, what, uh, what if I give up all my worldly possessions, uh, become a hermit, and uh, move to a cave in the Catskills? Dragons are notorious assholes. By ridding yourself of all liabilities, you've probably just pissed it off. If this is the case, call me today and ask about my personal defender plan. Aren't dragons just pure fantasy? Does this look like fantasy to you? My dog Muffy vanishes, my pocket change is disappearing, my joints in my house have been creaking, my basement smells like an ashtray. Now what's that number again? Call me, Byron Delancey, at 322-4687. Call today and ask about our damsel in distress at a family freaks discounts. That's 322-4687. Put me and the DS-1000XL to work for you. Dragons are present. Extermination is performed at the discretion of the dragon slayer. Damage and vandalism. I love the ending of this. Contractual agreement not responsible for personal injuries obtained in the extermination of dragons. Recovered wealth and possessions are not required to be returned under the terms of the Finders Keepers Law of 2002. Price is non-negotiable. Only available to legal residents. Side effects of dragon slaying may include bleeding, lacerations, fatigue, and pregnancy. Not available in all states. Don't forget, all sales are final and include tax hanging license. What do you get, the nerd who has everything? A gift card from D4 Tabletop Gaming Cafe and let them figure it out. D4 Tabletop Gaming Cafe at 8228 Oak Street is open for the holidays. So head over and check out their expanded inventory of miniatures and miniature paints, board games, RPGs, TCGs. Or you can reserve a table for your next game night. Find them on Facebook at D4 Tabletop Gaming Cafe or go to their location at 8228 Oak Street, just two blocks off of Carrollton. Or go to their website at d 4 ca 
www.cafe.biz. Box tea again? Why don't you try the tea blends from the Viridian Tea Company? They sell blends that are guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With blends like Quantum Mechanics, Caligula's Herbal Nerve Tonic, and Manta Ray Dreaming, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby & Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 432 North Anthony Street or online at Etsy at the Viridian Tea Company. So put down the box and order some tea from the Viridian Tea Company today. Sincerely, your taste buds. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Autobots, transform and roll out. Welcome back into the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Let's get back to our Remembering Brian in the year 2020. Julie Schiavo and Louis Diabin are up next. Let's talk to Julie Schiavo. Julie, what's kicking, Jenny? Hey, Julie. Hey, guys. How are y'all doing? We're good. So, Julie, what, what you got for us tonight? What? So far, well, we're doing actually, pretty good. I wanted to tell y'all about my first memory of Brian. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the first time I met him, but it was CoastCon, I think it was 18. That was back in the mid-90s. I say they number those things? They say- yeah, <laughs> they do, believe it or not. Um, and I was running volunteers. He was volunteering. I think it was one of his first times volunteering. Um, Unity could probably correct me on this. <laughs> but um, Sunday morning came, and they told me, you need to give out the Go for the Year Award. And I'm like, okay, let's see. Who has the most hours? Well, it was between Brian and Robert Nagel. And I thought, well, this is a noble brainer, and I gave it to Brian. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> so, I, it took me a very long. I don't know if I ever lived that down. Actually, I'm about to say, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you got got some side eye from from him for a while on that one, huh? <laughs> I did just a little. <laughs> oh my oh. goodness! Well, you know, it's. But, it's you know, I, I just felt like he was he was so excited to be volunteering, and he worked so hard. I was like, this is the kind of person we need to keep in fandom. We need to reward him for doing what he was doing. And I just, I was like, yeah, it has to, I, you know, that was easy. I'm going to do that. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny. Brian and I had several conversations, just he and I, about, about conventions in general, and uh at the last Crescent City Con, I remember that I, I, I'm pretty sure Frank was was sitting there, but but Robert was there, and I went up to them and I thanked them for all the years of, of Crescent City Con because I knew for a good ten year span I was with that drunken teenager that made them you know pull what was left of their hair out, and Brian and I would talk about how thankless a job it was because he and I did a couple of stints here and there for cons, but it is a thankless job and nobody's got any compliments for you it's always hey this sucks this sucks fix that fix this and brian and i would always kind of look at each other it's like damn this is not for us and and hats off to everybody who does run all these conventions and the volunteers and everything because hey it's a thankless job man mm-hmm. it can be but but it's worth it in the end it is it is yeah. julie thank you so much you got anything else uh no no, that was it. But Frank wanted me to call because he said I had a better story. I'm sure Frank's just being <laughs> modest. Frank probably has all yeah. the dirt. That's what Frank's got. That's why Frank did yeah. come on. He knows all the bad stories that probably aren't FCC yeah. legal. So I guess yeah, Julie... those are the ones we could talk about afterwards when we get together. Those are the stories we're going to tell. Yeah, th- exactly. that's it. Yes, Julie. Thank you so much. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. All right, thank Let's... you, Julie. Let's Bye-bye. go to, hey, Louis D. Aubin is here. Louis, what's kicking chicken? Hey, what's up? David, Scungy, and Paul. Thank you so much for having me on. Dude, look, man, Absolutely. you know, I, 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 I was reaching out to you because I was talking about how one of the first podcasts I ever did with the show 
was at Time Fest, and that was before Brian was with me on the show. But Brian and I sat there, and I've got this recording somewhere. I got to go find it. It was like two hours long of just me and Brian talking about how the big box cons suck, and the little Time Fest and and the local cons were where it was at, dude. So uh, you didn't even have a table at that con. It was like a card table. It was like a two by two <laughs> little table. It, it was. You it at. was. It was. It was nice though. I, that's, that's all we needed. <laughs> It was all we needed. Yeah, it was. It was great. Oh my god! Yeah, he was so supportive. It was. It was a righteous party. It was. It was nothing but a relaxicon. But he just went all in and would help us out every year with promo and just endless, you know, running interference during the con. Uh, he was always there for my band, uh, Consortium of Genius. He always had our back. Even booked us to play at the uh, anniversary show yeah. at Southport a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of years ago. And um, I don't have any juicy stories to tell other than just endless thanks to this this guy who's just larger than life and, and fantastic in every way. I couldn't believe him. It was but, just too good to be true. You know, and, and, and that's what's so so crazy, too, is because, like, you know, I, I I downloaded a bunch of music because Brian had terrible taste in music. And when I put this out there, <laughs> somebody, people got pissed at me. They got pissed. But I'm like, here's a guy who would drive around listening to, like, you know, the Fallout soundtrack on, on his, like, here you go. He, he'd just be cruising to this. This was Brian in a nutshell. Listen to Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, my goodness. All right, wait, here's another one. Yeah, see, he would just imagine Brian just cruising down the street. Yeah, I can picture it, man. It's just, it's perfect. It is. It is. It's him. It's still terrible taste of music, though. I don't care what. Yeah, says. right. But it was charming. You know, <laughs> it so was. It was. You couldn't I, hold it against him. No, you couldn't. It couldn't. It actually, I made an entire segment out of it. Brian held super, super. groovy pick of the week. <laughs> it was so bad. I loved it. Oh man, oh, that, no. was your, that was your favorite segment we ever did. It oh, was. Man, you love that. Actually, I've got all the old links, and I thought about doing that too. There's so much. There's so much stuff that Brian and I did over the course of how many years we've been doing this show, like seven years or whatever. Like there, he actually gave me a spreadsheet of crappy music that he liked, and out of like thirty cuts, there was like two songs I liked. I'm like, Jesus, dude, <laughs> this is terrible, terrible music. But those were the yeah, things, I, man. You know we. Really did enjoy working with him on the Tomb of Nick Cage stuff. Uh, as a coda to what Melissa was talking about, there was plans for this big video based on that song, and it was going to be in the style of Sin City, and it was going to, to look like Orson Welles directed it, and it was going to be crazy, just with Brian all the way through it, doing that announcer. Right. And um, it, just, it just never happened fast enough, you know? No, look, you know, they, there were so many projects that, that he would take on himself, though, too. I mean, there were, we had a lot of other stuff, you know, brewing on, on, on the side that a lot of people, you know, were aware of or weren't aware of. There was a, you know, the dude didn't stop, man. The dude didn't stop. And so, uh, you know, look. Uh, yeah, total inspiration. No, look, he, he had that ability to find a little spark in somebody and just kind of fan it for him, even if they didn't even know they had it. You know, he he would point things out to me. He was like, hey, you know, you're really good at that. They're like, really? And they're like, oh, yeah, I, maybe I am. <laughs> you know, and he had that ability, man. He had the patience of, of somebody who could, you know, just mentor people, though, too. I mean, he did all that stuff, man. Was, yeah, and amplify other people's bad or good ideas. You know, we need more people like that who can whip the other creatives into shape. Yeah, you know, that's – and. Right about now, look, I, this is this is funny, and, and Lewis, I think you'll appreciate this. Right now, while everybody's in quarantine and they're just kind of stuck at home, who are they looking to for so, for diversions right now? But artists, musical artists, every yeah. sort of artist, because right now people are chomping at the bit for new things, and who do they go to? The artists. So support absolutely support your local the only bands. That can take the edge off the boredom. Exactly, man. So hey, look. Lewis, tell tell people about Cog, but also, uh, what is that? Y- y'all are doing some internet music right now too, like like kind of entertaining the masses. Tell me tell me about that, bro. Okay, so I yeah, I hate to speak on behalf of uh, Doctor Pinkerton because he's his own weird, violent force of nature. But uh, what Doctor Pinkerton has brewed up, and I, I wish Brian could get involved with this too, but um, sadly he couldn't. Right. But um, we've got something called Escape from the Secret Lab. Uh, every week we're going to have a band 
locked in the secret lab, and they're going to have to win their way out by playing to survive. Nice. So, so that's yeah. awesome. So it's like Thunderdome. Like one, a good time. Two bands like, enter, yeah, one band like leaves. A, a rock and roll Thunderdome, and it's going to be a different band every week, a different style every week. Uh, this is not going to be all folk acts either. It's going to be hard rock and metal and punk and and a lot of hard hitting stuff. The first one we just did uh, was it was a, an exercise in learning. It went a little bit rocky at first, but we pulled it out at the end. And it was uh, last Friday, mm-hmm. and you can watch it at escapefromthesecretlab.com. There you go, Lewis. That's that. That's how we do it, man. Look, thank you so much for calling in, man. I really hey, do thanks, appreciate y'all. it. Thanks, Thanks for rattling my cage too. Mm-hmm. Yes, and sir. And thank you, Brian, for everything you've ever done. Amen. Thank you, Lewis. Thanks for calling in, bro. No Take care, y'all. Yep. Desire. Yeah, here you go. That is the one song you hear every time you play Fallout. I mean, you really do everywhere you go. Time. I mean, that goes to show. Like, like I have never met a person in my life who loves the Fallout mythos (laughs) more than Brian. I mean, he embraced it. He like he took it in. So much. The fact that you hear that song, like I said, throughout the entire song, all the, uh, the entire game, the entire time, and the fact that he could listen to that in his car, <laughs> he would, dude. I, don't know how, I can't hear that song anymore in my life. I he, can't listen to it because I play the game so much. Oh god! Like one time, we, we both pulled up at the same station at the same time, and he and he was rocking the entire Fallout soundtrack. I got out of my car. I'm like, <laughs> "What the hell are you doing?" And he goes, "Look, it's the whole soundtrack." I'm like, "I'm well aware of what you're listening to, Mister Held." <laughs> oh dear God! Oh. You know, we, we, yeah, we see, like this is at least a decent music, song. Right? You know, the Wanderer. <laughs> oh. See that? Now this is like this is isn't that from Roadhouse or was that was when he's driving? Well, down? I mean, it's been in a it's been in a million movies. Yeah. This is the week in geek on News Talk ninety nine five WRNO. And from the storm, fanzine highlights black female characters in comics and sci-fi. The fanzine is for and by black women featuring original artwork, interviews, and cultural criticism. As black women fans, we have unique perspectives that are often silenced and discouraged in mainstream outlets. In from the storm is a shelter from the storm, a place for black women to gather, learn, and discuss our black female nerddom. Find them at infromthestormzine.com or at infromthestorm on Facebook. Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop invites you to browse their specially curated collection at tubbyandcoos.com. While the store at 432 North Anthony Street may be closed for browsing, you can order online and have it shipped directly to you or stop by for porch pickups. Follow them on social media for updates and virtual events at Tubby and Coos on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So toss a coin to your bookkeeper and help Tubby and Coos, the nerd mecca, survive the pandemic and 2020. Go to tubbyandcoos.com today. This is the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter at Twig Radio. Do it now. Welcome back into the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. We continue on with our Remembering Brian Held. Coming up now, we've got the tea goddess, Kimberly Richardson, and also Melissa Mooney from the tomb of Nick Cage. So let's get back to it. Tea goddess Kimberly Richardson, you were one of the people that that was, was very close with Brian. I mean, he, you and he had a very special relationship. I mean, I, I, I would ask for a story, but I'm sure we don't have enough time. So, give me something good, Kim. The only thing that I want to talk about are the sad pancakes. <sighs> sad pancakes. Yes. What are those? I don't know what you're talking about. So they should be good. <laughs> I used to have breakfast with. Brian at Dots. Oh, God, Dots. And um, he used to always make me laugh so hard that I would break my ribs and I would always blame him. And one time he said something that was so funny that I was 
crying in my pancakes. <laughs> and being Brian, he continued to rib me and said, oh, you got spare pancakes now. And that just made me almost pass out on the floor. So that pancakes. anytime I have pancakes, I think about the fat pancakes. Uh, that is awesome. Somebody posted a picture of his Vader cup at, at Dots. I think, uh, yes. like he he married, and it's so funny because the LCBH with the pastor in your pocket, that was legit. He married several, several couples. Yes, he did. I lost track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, aside from the many stories, um, he was my brother, and he always used to make fun of me, of course, with World of Warcraft, but he was my brother. Well, look, and you know, I will always, I will always miss him. Well, in in honor of of you from him, we'll just say Brian says for the horde. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I'll reply with Salama Asalanore. I hope I said that right. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, look, I forgot how many. I forgot which tattoos Brian had, but he he had Warhammer 40k tattoos. So that was so funny. Like, yeah, like, he had a, he had the the Marine uh, the Eagle Crest. On yeah, the arm. He, he he was he was yep. he was a mini gamer, and and I was a pencil and paper guy. It's so funny. We were just like we're total opposites, man. Yeah, Kim. I but, know. I know. This has been uh, you know a, a hard time for you, but I'm so so glad that you called in because I mean, look. All we can do is celebrate right now because we can't. I, I can't hug you, Kim. I can't see you except maybe like FaceTime or whatever. But I'm so glad yeah. you're back in town. That makes me feel much, much happier now. Same thing here. And thing uh, here. you know, we'll, we'll all get through this. And and eventually, yeah. once they lift the Corona ban, we can all go to a con, and then we can just get uh, you know, bleep bleeped. Bleep, bleep, that, that sounds that, like, that that sounds like a very bleep, bleep. good plan, but I will say for the record, I'm happy to finally be in the city that I love, and even though Memphis will always have a special place in my heart, New Orleans is my soul, and Brian was very much a part of that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and Memphis sucks anyway, so sorry. Oh, man, we got Elvis and barbecue. What you trying to say, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'll cook you some real good barbecue. I promise. They do have some really good barbecue up there. <laughs> Dear God, I know. Kim, I love you, baby. Thank you for calling in. We'll, 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 we'll talk again real soon. I'll, I'll hit you up this week. Sounds good. Good deal. All right, bye, guys. Bye, baby. All right, Later, let's, go to, uh, let's go to Greg. Later, Kim. Greg, how are you, man? I'm doing great. Thank you all so much for having me on. Absolutely, man. Who is this, Greg? I, I'm, I'm a, I, do I know you? Am I supposed to know you? I'm sorry. Oh, you're totally fine, man. Brian talks about you all the time. Um, Brian was actually critical to helping me and Mark and some of our friends get the Louisiana podcasting group together. Shut uh, up. He'd be at every single event. Oh, man, he was critical. Seriously, he encouraged all of us. He was always talked about the cult of done. You know, don't talk about the project. Get it done. Yes. Uh, he was just hugely yes. inspirational. I mean, he was great to work with and just brought such cheer and power and like I heard someone saying earlier, he's everybody's cheerleader. He identifies the skills that you have and helps you chase it. And he just, every idea, he wanted to hear about it. He wanted to tell you how, you know, maybe a project he heard that was similar or a cool concept or a cool take on it. He just, nothing but encouragement and just great vibes at every single event. We couldn't have done it without him. You know, and, and that was something that was so funny because, like, he, he would he would hear, like, if somebody had a name for a podcast, he'd, he'd do a quick Google search. Okay, you know what? That's a good name because nobody else has it. You know, he would <laughs> he, he would do that quick legwork and then, you know, you just kind of, you know, work with people to, to, to get them to do it, you know? And I just, the cult of done, I'm glad that's come up, like, three times tonight, dude. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah, so. I mean, and he, he was so encouraging. Like, my buddy Davis and I have been trying to do more voice acting work, and we were working on this great project with him that, you know, he was just so encouraging and pushing for it. And he'd be like, all right, we need this part. Greg, you're doing that part now. Send me lines. You know, he was just nice. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Look, I mean, and that, that was his passion though, too. I mean, he loved the podcast space, you know, it's like, you know, we, we would every now and again to be like, look, we're a radio show, but we host it as a podcast, but the podcasting format is, 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 where everybody can do things. I mean, it, like new things are created in that space. And he loved, he loved helping people foster that. And people would get discouraged early. It's like, look, 
just because you're not getting 100 downloads after month two doesn't mean you got to quit. You got to keep getting in there, grinding it out, getting dirty, and knowing exactly. that you will get better, but you got to keep your ass in there and, and swing it away, man. Exactly. Like, I come from a technician background, and when I first did our first podcast meet up with Brian, it was music to my ears when he said, hey, guys. I come from radio, you know, in the typical Brian announcer voice. I come from radio, and let me tell you, every time you hit record, you treat it like a damn live radio show or you're going to have a lot of problems. And like, he was so all about it. He, he was just so – just taught all the best lessons, always told us how to move forward, act professional. He was great. Dude, he was so great. Greg, look, thank, yeah. thank you for that, man. That, that means the yeah. world. I appreciate you calling in and sharing that because, like, a lot of people – only saw little facets of Mr. Brian Held, and, you know, <laughs> he, he he touched a lot of people. Look, thank you so much for calling in, man. I really do appreciate it, brother. Thank you all so much for doing this. Loving the stories. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. All right, let's go to Mr. S- the Silverblatts. Hey, what's happening? Hey. hey. I just Mike? want to say, hey, uh, Brian, you man, me the wild dog. He, 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 uh, when they say he helped everybody from – Anybody to everybody, look, we were we were at our smallest, and Brian was there. Brian walked up to our door one day and said, like, "Hey, look, I got y'all. I got y'all this deal. I got somebody that wants to look at you, you know." And he's like, "Hey," and he brought us more business than I've seen anybody ever bring us. Look, you know, yeah, dude. He, he helped us out when we were at our worst and we were at our smallest. Man, I can't say enough. He took care of us. He did, you man. know, and we took care of him, and in return, but he took care of us. And I'm, man, uh, he, he's he's wonderful. He's always been wonderful. Uh, every time we see him, he introduces us to everybody, anybody. <laughs> Hell, that's the only reason I know you. It's because of Brian. Hell, he, I wouldn't have talked to you if he wouldn't have said you were a nice guy. Because every time I met you, uh, I don't, can't don't, tell you don't I say it. On radio, don't but, say it. You know? I'm usually drunk when we when we meet each other. I know. I get you. Look, thank you. Thank don't you for y'all. calling in, man. Silver Black Design, guys. Check him out. All right, let's go to Melissa from the tomb of Nick Cage. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hey, guys. Sean's here, too. Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Well, we had to call in because we have so many stories about Brian. And we, um, we want to hear them all right now. Oh, my goodness. Well, in order, I don't know, a little background. I know you guys know, but uh, our first album was directly stolen from the The name of the first album was directly stolen from The Weekend Geek. And uh, I started Boo. following you guys. And uh, y'all mentioned something about uh, Nicolas Cage being the pharaoh of New Orleans. Yes. We immediately... Yep lifted that to the uh the title of our first album and then i started following um brian on facebook and we became really really good friends online we never met in person Mm -hmm. and the the first time i met brian in person we were playing the uh after party over at pensacon a few years ago oh my god yeah and i had only seen pictures of him and so we're in a bar and i see him from across the room and i screech regional celebrity brian Helm!" and everybody in the room turns around and looks I run over and embrace him. I've never seen the guy before. I met the guy in person in my life. And uh, he hugged me, and and that was it. He clearly approved of my really, really obnoxious distraction. And I I think that was it. I think we we hit it off at that point. I I would say yes. That is absolutely true. So the the local celebrity Brian Held. Boy, I wish you to say that for the last segment because we could have segued into local celebrity Brian Held in your pocket. But – Let's talk about the the music because you guys just uh, dropped another album and uh, Brian Held was actually in that album. I'm tr- I've been trying to. What was the name of the song? Because I think I got it in the system here somewhere. It's a uh, it's Night of the Lamprey. In fact, it's it's funny you bring that up. I remember one day I was at PJ's. This one morning I was at work and uh, I'm in line just waiting to get my coffee or whatever. And I hear that voice behind me. You know that just that voice. You just know who it is immediately. <laughs> yep. It's Brian. Like oh my god. So I turn around and he just totally stopped what he was doing with who I forget who it was that he was with at the time. But he stopped what he was doing and we just immediately started talking about like Pensacon and the things we you know we were planning on doing together and working on and it was just uh, it was just one of those moments that just kind of happened out of the blue that you just kind of never forget because he was you know he was that type of guy. 
Yeah, and and the song is it was the last one I wrote on the album. It was kind of like an add on, and um, I, I said I this song needs something, and and uh, Brian had expressed interest in working with us, and I said I know what it needs. It needs Brian Held, and so Brian came in, and he was so good at timing that I had written like a little script, and he instinctively knew exactly where to put everything <laughs> in, and so uh, you know completely completely honored to have him have him on the on the on the album on uh on that track night of the lamprey you know and look, by the way he was he, so excited about he, that. no 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 you, you got it wrong video. scungy he wouldn't <laughs> shut up about it because he got it in one take he got it in yeah, one take yeah. one and he was take. strutting around look at me he got it in one take i'm like yes brian i get it you got it how many yeah, times he did. Y'all came to the studio and actually uh, uh, uh melissa you actually came to the studio and you did a show with us and Brian, right when you were talking about the release of it, and I don't know how many times Brian mentioned during that interview that he got it in one take. In one I think take, he said about five. He times. did. He did. He, he, did. he, he did. was, it was very amazing. Proud of he nailed it right off the bat. And in fact, it was jaw dropping. And in fact, <laughs> he's credited on the album as intergalactic celebrity Brian Hell. Ah, I love it. <laughs> one other thing about Brian is I remember um, he uh, got me like some voice work. Uh, uh, on a on a little video game project, which I honestly it's not my forte. I, that's probably the last time I'm going to be asked to do that. You but never I tried. Know. You never know. But um, I was kind of feeling down about things, and uh, you know, Brian sat me down and he talked to me for like an hour about just pushing on and 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 you know doing just being myself. The and, cult is done. The cult, the cult is of done. Oh, like I never heard that before. And and it changed it changed my life and it changed my perspective and uh, on a serious note you know that's uh, I'll, I will never forget that and I'm going to share that with people um, for the rest of my life because look, it changed it changed the way I look at things and and he he had that he had that ability I mean he just you know yeah. Uh, he, he would sit down and talk with you, and I think it was I think Brian Anderson. We, he's an author we've had on, and he did a little video. And and one of the things he said in it was how, you know, when whenever Brian talked to you, he was completely focused on you. You know, it yeah. it, it, yeah. it wasn't distracted. You you were the center of his his world at that moment, and and it's so true. I mean. Uh, there ain't no other Brian, you know, I mean, no. but he had that ability, but, and, and that's kind of why like tonight's show, I wanted to talk to people about things that he had done because he would see those things in people and the whole cult of done. It's like Brian and I would always say, it's like, look, you come to us for advice. We will give you advice, but we'll also give you a kick in the ass because if, if, if you're coming at us and you want ideas or you want help, we'll give you the help, but don't just take the help and go sit in your ass. You, you go get yeah, it right. done. And Brian That's had right. a way. I'm a jerk. Brian's not. And he had, he had the more gentle way of coercing people to go do things. I would just kind yeah. of scream and throw stuff at people. So. This is right. And, and, you know, I asked him, I said, you know, sometimes I just, I just don't want to hang out with people. You know, I just, I just, I don't want to talk to anybody. I was like, you ever feel like that? And he said, no. He said he always loved being around people. And I was like, I was kind of like, oh, man, I need to work on myself. Then. Yeah, no, look, look, that, that's why he and I got along so well, because I'm not I'm not a big fan of people. That's why I like working in my little fishbowl here at the radio station. <laughs> Brian loved going out there and kissing babies, shaking hands, all that stuff. Yeah. It's yep. inspiring. It's inspiring. We, we all like. But everybody looks up to looks up to Brian. It's uh, he touched so many people and just a man, a great guy. He absolutely did. Guys, look, thank y'all so much for calling, man. You know, so you know what, uh, you know what, we're gonna go go ahead and take a break, and you know what, we'll do it again. We'll go ahead and play "Night of the Lamprey" from the Tomb uh-huh. of Nick Cage. Good Thanks, guys. This is Brian Howe from KMKU with breaking news on the last night's news shower. It appears that we have been contacted by. Know it. 
what do you get the nerd who has everything? A gift card from D4 Tabletop Gaming Cafe and let them figure it out. D4 Tabletop Gaming Cafe at 8228 Oak Street is open for the holidays. So head over and check out their expanded inventory of miniatures and miniature paints, board games, RPGs, TCGs. Or you can reserve a table for your next game night. Find them on Facebook at D4 Tabletop Gaming Cafe or go to their location at 8228 Oak Street, just two blocks off of Carrollton. Or go to their website at d4cafe.biz. Box tea again? Why don't you try the tea blends from the Viridian Tea Company? They sell blends that are guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With blends like Quantum Mechanics, Caligula's Herbal Nerve Tonic, and Manta Ray Dreaming, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby & Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 432 North Anthony Street or online at Etsy at the Viridian Tea Company. So put down the box and order some tea from the Viridian Tea Company today. Sincerely, your taste buds. Welcome back to The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Don't forget you can listen to previous episodes on the iHeartRadio app at The Week in Geek Radio Show. Here's D Squared. Welcome back into The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared. Let's get back to remembering Brian Held. Uh, this uh, next segment is Ted Wally, who uh, does rock a pretty mean cowboy hat. And, of course, our friend and family, Unity from Coast Con. I guess, like, the, the queen of the Gulf South fandom. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's go to the guy who owes me a dollar, and I want my dollar back. Ted Wally Whoa. from Matilda, <laughs> the Force of Evil versus the, the third grade. Ted, what's kicking, chicken? Hey, baby, I'm inking a page while I'm talking to you guys, so uh, hope y'all don't mind me double dipping here. Ted, yeah, uh, look, you know, you, you you've been in studio with me and Brian on a few occasions, uh, always at the cons and stuff. Where the hell did you meet Brian, man? Do you remember? Um, well, I want to start off by kind of saying what no one else has said yet. Brian was a bastard. <laughs> who owed me <laughs> No. Just, <laughs> so but he was, he was our bastard. He was our bastard. That's but he was our Tell us how you feel. So, uh, no, I'm just kidding, of course. Is that, uh, uh, no, uh, I want to say I met Brian at um, probably one of the Wizard Worlds. And uh, then we didn't, I mean, I knew, we knew of each other. We kind of had some passings. And then when Supercon came to town is when we actually, like, got to talk to one another. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I've known for since however long Wizard World's been here. Right, right. Ted, let's get back to that dollar you owe me. Um, so, uh. Oh, <laughs> this one right here? Yeah, oh, really? You got my dollar? Oh. Brian paid it's me. Right here. Brian admitted right he was here. wrong, and Brian was very rarely wrong. Brian, I, I was always wrong, and but I would never admit it to Brian. Did you know what his text message, whenever I texted Brian, do you know what his text alert sound was? <laughs> it was me. He pulled it from, from one of the shows of going, you're right, Brian, I'm wrong. That Whenever I texted Brian, that was the sound effect on his phone. Bastard. He was well, a bastard. Um, Why did I'm going to you see if I can do the same thing. <laughs> So uh, that whenever you text me, it'll be you're right, Brian. I was wrong. Yeah. So, <laughs> but but here's the thing, though. Brian was wrong, and I was right in this particular instance because Disney Plus is all nice family stuff. There ain't no porn. There ain't no murdering on Disney Plus. Thus, you owe me a dollar, Ted Wally. Actually, I owe you a dollar because it was we were saying that it was they gonna were be going tiered. to. Yeah, they were going to do a tier level that gave you access to certain things. Yeah, like the porn, and, and it's not. Uh, I'm no, because I was thinking I didn't think they would do it for like porn or anything like that. I think they <laughs> were just gonna. My thoughts were they were just gonna dump all that stuff to Hulu, but uh, I, you know, with all the new Marvel shows and stuff like that, I thought for sure Disney would get greedy and do tiers for uh, you to get the really sweet premium access. Um, you know, that you would pay more for. But I don't know. I guess not. I guess not. So I guess whenever the yeah. quarantine ends, I'll just come track your ass down and, uh, you know, get my dollar. I had a dollar for you at Wizard World, but somebody was too busy. So, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. 
So, all right, Jed. It was sitting, right, sitting right there on my table. Told, <laughs> he I did. Told, he, he I, I know I told Scunji to tell you. Interviewed him. That's true, right? Yeah, that, that Brian, Brian, Brian was, uh, y'all were ratting around doing all the uh, the videos and stuff. Huh, Scunji? You and Brian? Yep, yeah, and we, we interviewed Ted there. Proof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I remember telling Scunji, tell uh, David if he wants his dollar, he's got to come over here and get it. See, I never watched the I videos. I told him. <laughs> David never showed up. But he didn't show. He showed up for like five minutes that day. I did. I did. I'm like <laughs> I, I'm like a wizard. I appear when I want to. I appear exactly when I mean. I'm never late. So Ted. Yeah. So uh, you know. Yeah. So if the wizard wants his dollar, <laughs> <laughs> so Ted have to appear. <laughs> uh, Ted, tell tell the folks where they can find your work and all that because, like Brian would always say, always be promoting. Where can people find your work, brother? All you got to do is uh, you can Google me uh, or go to tedwally.com, T-E-D-D-W-A-L-L-E-Y.com, and it's got all my social media links, but you can find me Facebook, uh, IMDB, Behance, Ooh, IMDb. Twitter, Instagram, all those guys. And you can read the comic for free on Webtoons, and you can read it for free on Tapas. Nice. Um, and you can also buy it at the local comic shops, and you can also buy it from tedwally.com. There you go, Ted. Thanks for calling in, man. It's good to hear your voice, brother. And uh, as always, you guys need anything, just give me a shout. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ted. Good deal. Thanks, Ted. All right, bro. Glad you too, man. All right, let's see who is next. Oh my God, this should be fun. Let's go to Unity. 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 How are you, Unity? I'm making it. How are you guys? Hey, look, you know we're we're making it. How Jesus? When the hell did you meet? When the hell did you meet him? High school. We were in Reaper Jail together. The Grim Reaper I, I was, Jail? Is that what you said? No, Reaper Jail. Wait, what? Was taken for the yearbook. Riverdale. Oh, Riverdale. Riverdale. I thought you Jail said Reaper Jail. Jail. I'm like, what is Reaper That's Jail? That's exactly what I said, Dave. Oh, That's okay. See? All right. Riverdale, Reaper Jail. I don't know what the hell all this is. Good but Lord. I really didn't interact with Brian until uh, I'll tell the older story. Oh yes, at Saga point five, maybe. Oh my oh, God, wow. Saga! He was dating a girl and had been caught um, stepping out on her, to put it appropriately. <gasps> what was, was was her name? Sean? Was her name Sean? Who? Nothing. Never mind. Was it Sean? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Um and. The girl ran into me, and she's like, do you know what room Brian's in? And I'm like, Brian who? She's like, Brian Held. And I'm like, uh, no. And she's like, it's got to be this way. So I followed this girl that I had never met before in my life. Oh, my God. And knocked on a door. And when Brian opened the door in, like, a towel, <laughs> she took the entire ice bucket she had in his hand and dumped it over his head. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> and... and, and I don't know who was more surprised, <laughs> me or Brian, because I was like, why did you make me follow you for this? And she's like, I needed an audience. Oh, my I God. That is awesome. I've never heard a bad story about Brian. This is great. You just made my this day, is the best Unity. Day ever. Why weren't you there for the roast? Because it, it's really I, hard to roast uh, somebody when they have no bad stories to tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have plenty of bad stories. I just don't tell them. Oh, all right. Well, we are FCC regulated, so but I right. I, I like the towel, the ice towel thing. Yeah, but you yeah, know, how, yeah. do you know how I started smoking? It was Brian. It was Brian Hill. Oh. I, I was I was messing with this girl Sean at the time. We were at Nassif. It was not not Nassif. Whichever one was at the airport Hilton like three decades ago. Nossif. It was Nossif. Nossif. There we go. Nossif. Yeah. So it, it was there because we were, we were playing a uh, vampire LARP. And it was so funny yep. because Brian had previously dated this girl. And then we're all drunk and she runs off with Brian. I'm like, bruh. So, like, I grabbed Brian by the scruff and we went downstairs. And I'm like, I'm either going to punch you in the face or you're going to give me a cigarette. So he gave me a cigarette. And, um, <laughs> I've been smoking and friends with Brian for, I mean, that wasn't the first time I met Brian, though, either. But that was when I first started smoking. So that's the closest we could get <laughs> to where we first met. But, yeah, it was, I was either going to punch him in the face or he's going to give me a cigarette. So he gave me a cigarette. And here we are. Brian often said I was, the, I was his favorite among his exes. <laughs> we, all have, we all have those. We all have those, Unity. Yeah, we do. Oh, man. So what else yeah, you got, Unity? Unity? I know you got a lot of stories. You got a lot, yeah. a lot of stories. 
Well, I can't leave y'all lost, can I? No, no, you cannot. You got no. What else you got? I want. I want another good one. Come on, Unity. I know you more, got some more juice. Come on, come on, come on. Probably one of my favorites was it was it was Crescent City Con ten because it was in the Quality Inn. I had been That's through it. some rough times, and of course, Brian was playing his vampire. I mean, his Bruja. <laughs> With the <laughs> Razor. Razor was his Razor. name. Razor's Edge. That was his yep. little group, wasn't it? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. He had, he had and, the Guns N' Roses, uh, you know, uh, denim jacket. Yep. And <laughs> I came in from a, uh, I had been in the costume contest, and I came into the conclave late. Okay. And uh, when I got there, the room was full. And I was like, well, what do I do? So I walked up and I sat on the table, and one of the guys that was on the, the, the group was like, you can't just sit on the table. And I'm like, well, there's nowhere else for me to sit. And Brian, of course, being Brian, looks at me and goes, hey, baby, you always got a place to sit on my lap. Uh, and, I was like, uh, and, and, and it stayed that way. <laughs> Brian was like that, I mean, within the last four or five years, he was always just, hey, you always know there's an opening on my lap. And I'm like, yes, Brian. Yes, I do. <laughs> You know, look, I, I think it was that same con Robert Nagel wanted to have me arrested, too. I think that was it the was. con. It, was it? Because there was yep. some schmuck who was there who wasn't playing in the vampire LARP game, but, like, accosted a, a, a normal. You know, he accosted a muggle. Yep. And this is pre-muggles, so we just call them normies. Um, normies. Yeah, yeah but, but, yeah, like, like they, they, they... A mundane. A mundane. Oh, that's, a, that's a fancy word, too. But, yeah, no, they, like, they... Nagel wanted to have me arrested because he thought the guy was in, in our LARP game. I'm like, it's not me. I don't even know who this guy is. Yeah, uh, you got blamed for everything. Dude. I did. I did. I, I'm, you know, Brian was always I the think- nice guy. He always got away with crap. I was the one who was always they're like, it's got to be that loud guy over there. So Unity, how's everybody doing? Uh, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all doing okay? Everybody's going to be all right eventually. I know yeah, that. But we'll be know. all right eventually. Yeah. So all right, baby. Look, thanks for calling. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love Anytime. the memory lane trips. We- those are the best. All right. Let's okay. we love, love you, you Unity. Love you, Unity. All right. Take care, Have baby. A good one, Unity. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for tonight's show. I wanna thank everybody for uh I don't know, just being yourselves and the the mental fortitude it took to get through this year. Uh look it's not like something is going to change dramatically on January 1st of 2021, but I'll tell you what, maybe for our mental health it will. Just to get out of the year 2020 will be a feat in and of itself. So thank you, everybody, for listening. And, uh, you know, look, let's, the year will be what we make it. And ideally, once this vaccine starts rolling out and we're all able to take it and begin to start gathering in groups, we can do a full-on Irish wake for our buddy Brian Held. So I love you guys. Hope you had a great Christmas. Happy New Year. Till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high.